You're listening to Ann Croker, Writing Coach, where I'm sharing my best tips and training skills and strategy to coach writers to improve their craft, pursue publishing, and achieve their writing goals. I'm Ann Croker, and this is episode 230, How to Read Like a Writer. You're a writer, so you write, but do you read? Of course you do, but how do you read? Do you read like a writer? Stephen King said in his memoir on writing that reading is the creative center of a writer's life. There are ways that writers can read that can be both inspiring and instructive, and that's what we're going to cover today. As we learn to read like a writer, you might be a little afraid I'm going to ruin reading for you, that you'll no longer be able to read for pleasure. But don't worry, you'll still be able to read for fun and distraction. But If you want to read like a writer, you will benefit from reading with an analytical eye. So the first way we're going to read as writers is to go ahead and read for inspiration and information, just like we always do. You need to understand a topic better, so you research and read about it. You want to expand your knowledge, so you read and take notes. You want to improve yourself, so you grab a book that's going to help you gain a skill or solve a problem. All that you read can feed into your writing. So that's one big way you can read like a writer. You're gleaning material for your work. As writers, we're always collecting ideas and content. In fact, we've probably always done this our entire lives. If not consciously, then maybe subconsciously, we've been doing this collecting, collecting. But now I want you to be more intentional about it. Even as you're casually reading the back of a cereal box, a tweet, or a magazine article, start to take notes about where this content came from, who wrote it, and how it impacted you, because this is all now material that you can use in all of your work. There's another big way that we can read as writers, and that's to start viewing these authors and these writers as teachers. They can instruct us. Francine Prose, in her book, Reading Like a Writer, said this, I've heard the way a writer reads described as reading carnivorously. What I've always assumed that this means is not, as the expression might seem to imply, reading for what can be ingested, stolen, or borrowed, but rather for what can be admired, absorbed, and learned. It involves reading for sheer pleasure, but also with an eye and a memory for which author happens to do which thing particularly well. So we read and pay attention to the choices that an author makes that results in such engaging work. In literature, especially in poetry courses, we talk about a close reading, where every idea, every sentence, even every word is examined. A close reading reveals all, from the highest level of themes and ideas, organization and structure, all the way down to the details of sentences and word choices. We see what works and why it works. And while we do want to look to the best to be able to level up, our work. We don't have to always be looking at Shakespeare and Dickinson to be able to improve as writers. Our teachers, our model texts, can be from the kinds of writing we want to pursue. We might find a blog post that is an excellent example, and we can follow that to discover the tone and the topics that were covered and the length and the layout, and we can learn from that as well. So find your experts, your teachers, your models, your experts, wherever they may be. Another way we can read like a writer is to annotate. Mortimer Adler, in his book How to Read a Book, written with Charles Van Doren, wrote this. Full ownership of a book only comes when you have made it a part of yourself. And the best way to make yourself a part of it, which comes to the same thing, is by writing in it. Their claim is that full ownership of a book happens not when you purchase it, It happens when you interact with it on the page. You annotate, you underline, you write in the margins, and in that way, you make it your own, and the book becomes a part of you. But let me tell you something. I grew up in a household where we did not write in books. It was verboten. And so it took a big hurdle for me to overcome that and start writing in books. And I started with a pencil because I could erase it and write really light with it. But eventually I got over that hump and I switched to a pen and I finally began to underline and make notes in a pen. And those books, not library books and not my parents' books, but my books that I bought, I began to write in them. And eventually I even began to color code sometimes with a highlighter. And this is how the books became mine. This is how I truly began to read like a writer. 
In fact, when we begin to annotate, we're starting a dialogue with the author across time and space. And it's a way that we can do our own close reading. Adler says, Marking a book is literally an expression of your differences or your agreements with the author. It is the highest respect you can pay him. And it's also a great way to mark the places where you are learning about technique. You're figuring out their style choices. You're remarking on their word selection. So it's another way to interact with the teachers that these authors have become. Now, if you want to zoom in for the closest reading possible, here's another idea, and that is copywork. Yeah, copywork. It's not just for kids. In fact, this is how people learn to write in ages past. Jack London copied out much of Rudyard Kipling's work to learn how to craft sentences and develop ideas. Ben Franklin also learned to write by a kind of copywork he invented. He took some articles from The Spectator and tried to write in the same style as these authors that he admired. He realized he was lacking in vocabulary and fluency, so he would take their work, read it closely, take notes on key words, and then try to go back and replicate that from memory. And in this way, he began to gain more and more fluency, more and more vocabulary by copying out from memory, using the key words, as much of the original text as possible. So he was using it to tutor him in writing. He talked about trying to express the hinted sentiment of the original article. So he would find his errors and correct them, and in that sense, tried to get closer and closer to the kind of style that he admired. After a while, he even decided to take it to another level, and that is he converted prose into poetry, and then after a few days would convert it back into prose again. And this is how he became a very talented and robust writer. We can borrow Ben's method for ourselves and look for that hinted sentiment and try to learn from those authors how they arrived at such a, an appealing way of expressing themselves. It's such a simple method to follow, whether you copy out word for word like Jack London or you use Ben Franklin's method of taking notes using a few key words and then trying to replicate from memory what you read before using those key words as a starting place. And as you can see, Ben could have chosen Shakespeare to learn from, but he didn't. He chose a contemporary whose work he admired. And you can do the same thing. You can choose your own experts, your own models, and their texts to learn from. And you can do that in the kind of genre you're pursuing. Now keep in mind, this is a learning exercise, not an opportunity to plagiarize. You're merely trying to learn how these experts Learn to piece things together, their phrasing, their flow, their rhythm. How did it all work? Francine Prose, again, says, Every page was once a blank page, just as every word that appears on it now was not always there, but instead reflects the final result of countless large and small deliberations. All the elements of good writing depend on the writer's skill in choosing one word instead of another. And what grabs and keeps our interest has everything to do with those choices. You are simply learning from their choices, just as Ben Franklin learned from the people he admired and Jack London learned from Kipling. When Ben recreated the work and tried to figure out how close he got, he was sometimes quite pleased. He wrote this in his autobiography. By comparing my work afterwards with the original, I discovered many faults and amended them, but I sometimes had the pleasure of fancying that in certain particulars of small import, I had been lucky enough to improve the method of the language, and this encouraged me to think I might possibly, in time, come to be a tolerable English writer, of which I was extremely ambitious. I hope that as you read like a writer and apply some of these ideas that you find, like Ben Franklin, that in particulars of small import, you may have actually improved on the method of the language. And I hope you, like Ben, are extremely ambitious to become a better writer. So the way to read like a writer is to read like a student, like, like an apprentice to the authors whose work inspires you. What author or book do you plan to turn to as your next teacher? And what methods do you think you're going to try? 
I would love to know who's going to be your tutor. So track me down on Instagram. I'm at Ann Croker and you can DM me. I would love to have a little chat about that. So be sure to subscribe to this podcast if you're a writer looking for input and confidence as you establish and advance your career. I'm Ann Croker, writing coach. Thank you for listening. Thank you.